Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Okay, so today I will continue uh, the lecture for chapter 5, which is data communication and computer network. Okay, so basically this is just uh, some extra notes other than the notes that are already uploaded inside the ULEARN. Okay, so for the notes that are already uploaded inside the ULEARN for part 1, part 2, part 3, uh, there will be no video lecture since it, it is already included in your assignment. Okay, so for this one, this is uh, extra notes that is quite important for you to study in for your final exam. Okay. Okay, so basically uh, for this lecture, uh, we will actually focus on uh, what is internet and also internet protocols okay so this first slide actually shows you the uh, an overview of what the internet is all about so stated here it is the millions of connected computing devices which consists of host and also n system okay so for this is the uh, internet overview so basically we have the host which is the server okay and also the end system which is the workstation and also the mobile uh, laptop here and also in between we have what we call as the router okay and the communication links uh, uh, it could be fiber fiber optics it could be copper wire it could be radio it could be satellite satellite okay and for the routers it's actually used to forward packets or we call it as chunks of data from the uh, server to the workstation or the end system. So when we deal with internet, we will deal with what we call as protocols. So protocols is used. Uh, protocols is used to control sending and receiving of messages. So example of protocols, we have TCP, IP, HTTP, FTP, and also PPP. Okay, so in the next, next slide, we will focus on these protocols, mainly the IP internet protocols. So what is a protocol? So this figure actually shows you the difference between a human protocol and a computer network protocol. So protocols actually is defined as the format and order of messages sent and received among network entities and actions taken on message transmission and received. Okay, so it is basically order of messages. Okay, so this is with respect to time. So for a human protocol, so the first person here, okay, will actually say hi first, and then the second person will reply hi. And then the first person will ask the question, got the time, and the second person will actually reply, it is 2 p.m. Okay, so this order of messages is what we call as protocol, but this is human protocols. Computer network protocol is also the same. It is the order of messages sent. So you can see that this, uh, the messages sent from this workstation to the server, and then to the workstation again, to the server, and to the workstation again. Okay? So all communication activity in internet is governed by protocols. So what is internet protocol or IP? So IP provide best effort connectionless packet delivery. Okay, and is motivated by the need to keep routers simple and by adaptability to failure of network elements. So this figure actually shows you the um, uh, IP, okay, the addresses for the internet protocol. So you can see that this is the headquarters, okay, so the headquarters send info to the server room, to the access, and also to the remote site. 
So you can see that each of this uh, uh, application has its own address. So this is the server subnet, this is data subnet, this voice subnet, we have wireless data subnet, and over here we also have the data subnet and also voice subnet. Okay, so these are the addresses. So all IP interfaces have an IP addresses. So each IP interface must have its own unique IP address. Okay, and this IP is represented as a 32-bit number of 0 and 1. And it is consists of two parts, which are network identification and also host identification. So we have two uh, IP addresses. So 32 bits in length is what we call as IPv4. If we have 64 bits in length, it is called IPv6. And the addresses are divided into a prefix and suffix. So suffix is the host address, prefix is the network number. Okay, so this, uh, this is an example of IP address. Okay, an IP address is a 32-bit address and it is unique and universal. So this, both of this number, this and this one, are both IP address. But this one is in binary notation and this one is in decimal, dotted decimal notation. Okay, how can you actually convert between dotted decimal notation to binary notation? Okay, so usually we will use this notation, the dotted decimal notation. Okay, so to convert from the dotted decimal notation, you just convert from decimal to binary. So 1 to 8, convert to binary, you will get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 11, convert to binary, you will get 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 3, convert to binary, you will get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And 31, convert to binary, you will get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so each uh, value here, okay, is consists of 8 bits. Okay, so in total, you will have 32 bits for the IP address in binary notation. Okay, so this is an example how you can change the following IP address from binary notation to dotted decimal notation. So look at the first one. Okay, so you need to convert from binary to decimal. So the solution is we replace each group of eight bits with its equivalent decimal number and add dots for separation. So one zero 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 one convert to decimal, you will get one to nine. And then you add a dot. Next, 1011 is equals to 11. And you add another dot. 1011 again is another 11. And then add another dot. And 11101111 is equals to 239. So this is the IP address in decimal notation. For Question A. Same for question B. Okay, so you can try, you can recheck for question B. So the answer for question B is 249.155.251.15. The next example is how you can convert from decimal notation to binary notation. So it's basically the same. So we replace each decimal number with its binary equivalent. So each decimal number 
when you convert to binary equivalent, it will have eight bits. So the first example, A, 111 convert to binary, you will get 01101111. 56 convert to binary, you will get 00111000. 45 convert to binary, you will get 00101101. And 78 convert to binary, you will get 01001110. Next, you can recheck for example B. So the previous is the IP address. Now we will look into network and also host addresses. So IP4 address contains network ID and also the host ID. So network ID plus zeros is the network address. Network ID plus ones is the broadcast address and the network ID plus host ID is the host address. For example, this is the IP host address, IP address, 123.234.210.109 So from this IP address, 123 is the network ID. Okay, 123 is the network ID. So the rest, does, the other decimal, when you convert to zero, it will become 123.0.0.0. So this is the network address. Why it is the network address? Because refer back to the previous slide, it stated that network ID plus zeros is the network address. So 123 is the network ID and 0, 0, 0. So this 123.0.0.0 is the network address. Next, from this IP address, we can also get the broadcast address. So the broadcast address for this IP address is 123.255.255.255.255. .255 .255 .255 .255 .255 why this is the broadcast address because refer back to the previous slide it stated that the broadcast address is where the network id plus once so once is uh, all once is actually the binary notation so if you convert one 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 eight bits okay one 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 for 8 bits, convert to decimal, you will get 255. So that's why 123.255.255.255 is the broadcast address. Next is the net ID and also the host ID. So we can actually divide the IP address into classes. It could be class A, B, C, D, or E. So for example, if it falls under the class A, the byte number one is the net ID, and the rest, byte two, byte three, and byte four, are the host ID. But if it falls under class B, the byte 1 and byte 2 is the net ID, whereas byte 3 and byte 4 is the host ID. For class C, byte 1, 2 and 3 is the net ID, byte 4 is the host ID. For class D, all bytes, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3 and byte 4 is the multicast address. And for class E, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3 and byte 4 is reserved for future use.
So this is the IPv4 address format. So in classful addressing, the address space is divided into five classes, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So in order to determine whether it falls under class A, B, C, D, or E, you need to refer to the first byte. Okay. So if the first byte is zero, then it is class A. If the second, if the first byte is one zero, then it is class B. If the third byte is 110, then it is class C. If the first byte is 1110, then it is class D. And if it's first byte 1111, then it is class E. So this is basically how the system determines the class. So first, it will look at the first bit. So this is the first bit. So if the first bit is zero, then automatically it is class A. But if the first bit is one, then you need to look at the second bit. So if the second bit is zero, then it is class B. If the second bit is one, you look at the third bit. So if the third bit is zero, then it is class C. But if the third bit is one, you need to look at the fourth bit. So if the fourth bit is zero, then it's class D, but if the fourth bit is one, then it is class E. So this is an example on how to find the address class. So the question asks, find the class of each address. So you were given an IP address in binary notation. So to, to, to determine the class of each address, you need to refer to the first byte. So this is the first byte. First byte, second byte, third byte, and the fourth byte. So in the first byte, you need to refer, you need to start looking at the first bit. So since the first bit here is zero, then, it is class A. For the second one, since the first bit is one, you need to look at the second bit. And the second bit is one, you need to look at the third bit. Since the third bit is also one, you need to look at the first, the fourth bit. So in the first byte, you have one, 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 one. So, this is actually falls under class E. So that's why for question A, the first bit is zero. So this is a class A address. For question B, the first four bits are ones. So this is a class E address. So the previous example is how to find the class in binary notation. Now you can also find the class in decimal notation. How you need to also look at the first byte. So if the first byte, the value is between zero to 127, then it is class A. But if the first part is from 1 to 8 to 191, it is class B. If the first part is 192 to 223, it is class C. If the first part is 224 to 239, it is class D. And lastly, if the first part is 240 to 255, it is class E. So this example asks you to find the class of each address in decimal notation. So you are given the IP address in decimal. So question A, 227.12.14.87. So to determine the class, you need to refer to the first byte. 
So this is the first byte. So the first byte is 2 to 7. So by referring to the previous table, which is this one, so 2 to 7 falls under class D. So that's why the first byte is 2 to 7, so it is class D. For question B, the first byte is 252. So 252 actually falls under class E. And C, the first byte is 134. So it is actually falls under class B. So this is how you find the address class for the decimal notation. So this figure is just to show you the IP addresses for class A. So you know that for IP for class A, the first byte is from zero is from zero to one hundred and twenty seven. So that's why for class A you have net ID zero until net ID one hundred and twenty seven. Okay, so the start is from 0.0.0.0 .0 and the last address is 127.255.255.255. So in between, for example, you have net ID 73. So the block for net ID 73 will be from 73.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 until 73.255.255.255. So this is the network address. So each uh, application will have their own network address. For example, this is 73.0.0.1, 73.0.0.2, until 73.255.255.254. So look at here, for 73.255.255.255 is for special application. So in total, for class A, you will have 128 blocks from net ID 0 until net ID 127. And in total, you will have 16777216 addresses in each block. Same for class B. So class B range from 1 to 8 until 191. So it start from 128.0.0.0 until 191.255.255.255. And this is for class C. So class C start from 192 until 2 to 3. So it starts from 192.0.0.0 until the address 223.255.255.255. Next is the IPv4 network address. In classful addressing, the network address is the one that is assigned to the organization. A network address is different from a net ID. A network address has both net ID and host ID with zeros for the host ID. So this example, this is an example for network address. Given the address 23.56.7.91, find the network address. To find the network address, you need to first determine the class. So to determine the, the class, you need to look at the first byte. So the first byte is 23. So it, will, it is actually falls under class A. So the class is A. And you need to take note that only the first byte defines the net ID. 
So only the first byte, 23, is the net ID. We can find the network address by replacing the host ID bytes, which is the 56.7.91, with zero. Therefore, the network address will become 23.0.0.0. .0 .0. How I actually know that this is the net ID and this is the host ID, you need to refer back to the previous slide. Okay, so this is the previous slide. The net ID and host ID. So in the previous example, it is false under class A. So for class A, we know that the first byte is the net ID and the rest is the host ID. But if you have a class B, then byte 1 and 2 is the net ID and byte 3 and 4 is the host ID. So next example, Given the address 132.6.17.85, find the network address. First, determine the class address. Determine the class. So the class, the first part is 132, so it is actually class B. So if you refer to the previous slide, for class B, The first two byte is the net ID, and the third and fourth byte is the host ID. So we know that the first two byte is the net ID. 132.6 is the net ID. We can find the network address by replacing the host ID bytes, which is 17.85 with zero. Therefore, the network address will become 132.6.0.0 after you change the host ID bytes to zero. Next is the private IP address. Private IP address is a specific ranges of IP addresses which are set aside for use in private networks. So these are examples of the IP addresses that is used for private networks. For example, from range 1, 10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255. And this is the range 2 and range 3. Next is the classless stop netting. Classless addressing is the alternative to class-based addressing. So the previous slide is the class-based addressing. It provides variable size networks and subnets and greater number of network IDs. It is more flexible, host ID allocation, with less wastage. It is the alternative to class-based addressing and is used across the internet. Next is the subnet na, mask. So we know that IP address has two parts, which are network identification, net ID, and also the host ID, host identification. Frequently, the network and host portions of the address need to be separately extracted. Under this addressing scheme called subnetting, separating the network and host requires a special process called the subnet masking. So why is subnet mask? The subnet masking process was developed to identify and extract the network part of the address. 
A subnet mask contains binary bit pattern of 1 and 0 and is applied to an address to determine whether the address is on the local network. If it's not in the local network, the process of routing it to an outside network begins. The function of subnet mask is to determine whether IP address exists on the local network or whether it must be routed outside the local network. If the extracted network address matches the local network ID, the destination is located on the local network. However, if they don't match, the message must be routed outside the local network. The process used to apply the subnet mask involves Boolean algebra to filter out non-matching bits to identify the network address. So remember, back the Boolean algebra that you already learned before. So this is the Boolean algebra for AND gate. So if you have bit 1 and 1, you will have the result 1. If you have bit 1 and 0, the result is 0. If you have bit 0 and 1, then the result is 0. And bit 0 and 0, the result is 0. In other words, the only way you can get the result of 1 is to combine 1 and 1. The process of combining binary values with Boolean algebra is called ending. Ending is actually the end gate. Next subchapter is the default standard subnet mask. There are default standard subnet masks for class A, B, and C addresses. So for example, for address class A, the subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. For class B, the subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. For class C, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Subnet masks apply only to class A, B, or C IP address. The subnet mask is like a filter that is applied to a message destination IP address. The objective is to determine if the local network is the destination network. So take note, this is very important. The objective is to determine if the local network is the destination network. So this is what the subnet mask does. If a destination IP address is 206.175.162.21, we know that it is the class C because the first byte is 206. And that is binary equivalent is 11001110.1010. Dot one zero one zero dot zero zero one zero dot zero 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 one zero one zero one after you convert this decimal value into binary. We also know that the default standard class C subnet mask is two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. So this is the standard subnet mask for class C. This is value is fixed, but you can change it to binary notation. So 255 will become 8 bits 1, dot 255, another 8 bits 1, 255, another 8 bits 1, and 0 is 8 bits 0. When these two binary numbers, the IP address, so this is the IP address and the subnet mask and this is the subnet mask are combined using Boolean algebra. The network ID of the destination network is the result. 
what this means is actually if you have the IP address you convert to binary notation and you have a subnet a mask address and you convert to binary notation then by using boolean algebra you will get the network ID address so you know that one one you will get one 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 zero one is zero zero one is zero one one you will get one 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 you will get one one and one you will get one zero and one you will get zero so you need to do the same for the other bytes So these are the answer. These are the result of the Boolean algebra. 1100111101101101010100010000000. So if you convert this binary notation to decimal notation, you will get 206.175.162.0. So this value is the network ID address. So these are the steps to obtain the network ID address from the IP address and the subnet mask. The result is the IP address of the network, which in this case is the same as the local network and means that the message is for a node on the local network. Next, this is an example. You are given IP address 128.42.5.2. And a subnet mask 255.255.248.0. Answer the following. Three questions change the address to slash notation. Okay. So this is the first one. To change the address to slash notation. How can you change the address to slash notation? First, you need to convert the dotted decimal representation of the net mask, which is 255.255.248.0, to binary. So you will get this value. Then, you need to count the number of contiguous one bits starting at the most significant bit in the first octet, which is the left hand side of the binary number. So you count it once, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So I counted 21 once. So the slash notation will become slash 21. Next, determine the subnet IP address. So we know that the network address is the logical end of the respective bits in the binary representation of the IP address and network mask. So to obtain the subnet IP address, what you need to do, first you need to convert the IP address to binary form and also the subnet mask to binary notation. So by using Boolean algebra, 1, 1 will become 1, 0, 1 will become 0, 0, 1 will become 0, and so on. So this is the result of the Boolean algebra. So if you convert it into decimal, you will get 1 to 8. Dot four two dot zero dot zero. 
So the network address of IP address 128.42.5.4 slash 21 is 128.42.0.0 and you need to add the slash 21. Next, you need to calculate the broadcast IP address and also the valid address range of host IP address. So the broadcast address converts all host bits to, uh, to ones. So remember that our IP address in decimal is 128.42.5.4. So this is in binary. And the network mask is 255.255.248.0. And this is in binary. This means our host bits are the last 11 bits of the IP address. Because we find the host mask by inverting the network mask. So this is the host bit mask. How to get the host bit mask is by inverting the network mask. By inverting this network mask, you will get the host bit mask. Next, to calculate the broadcast address, we force all host bits to be 1. So 128.42.5.4, this is the host bit mask. And this is an um, IP address. And this is the host bit mask. So by forcing all host bits to one, you will get this value. And then you convert to decimal, you will get 128.42.7.255. So this is the broadcast IP address. And the valid address range of host IP address is from 128.42.0.1 until 128.42.7.254. How do you get this value? It's based on this. So from this, from this uh, binary convert to decimal, you will get 0 0.0. .0 until this convert to decimal, you will get 7.254. This is another example that you can do. No, no, this is actually the question, the answer for the previous question. And this is another example. So you can try to do this example too, based on the previous example. And you should get this result in red. Okay, so this uh, two example is very important. How that you calculate the subnet IP address, broadcast IP address, valid address range of host IP address, number of valid hosts for the subnet. So this is basically the end of chapter 5 for the extra notes. So remember uh, for the final exam not only you just you need to concentrate on the part 1, part 2 and part 3 the ones that are already included in your assignment but also you need to study on this extra notes. Thank you.